For anyone who's wanted to do a big brake conversion for the rear of the lasers and Daytonas, especially if you've got drum brakes, um, this setup is one that I made from the smaller size, from like the 10 and a quarters I think it is. I put the big 11 inch rotors on. So I made this bracket in the ears and then the, the big rotor caliper goes on these ears. So that was a setup that I had done that works pretty good. I don't have any problems with it. But I got thinking, um, why not go for something easier if you've got the old drum brakes and you want to get into a, a disc. There's another option. Now this may look like the small ten and a quarter inch setup that the Daytonas were running but actually it's from a Neon PT Cruiser. Um, the Neon and the PT Cruiser both share the same rear brakes and I think the fronts are the same as well but I can't guarantee that one. But what I have done is the conversion to put the Neon brakes onto our rear ends and it's actually very easy. Um, there is a few little kinks. As you can see, this is the emer where the emergency brake cable comes in. There's some interference here at the top of the axle. You can just grind that away and that'll take care of it. This is an, a PT Cruiser Neon rear rotor. You see it's solid. The diameter on it ten and a half inches so this is the hub all this came right out of a PT cruiser you can buy the backing plates brakes emergency brakes um, and the hub assembly and the rotors Still, it's a very common part to get. Uh, their rear hubs are a lot different than ours. It's a one-piece hub. It's not as robust of a design, but if you're not racing, I don't think it really makes a bit of difference. As you can see, it all comes off as one piece. No more having to take the bearings out and pack them and screw around with it. It's all a one-piece assembly. Now, the only major difference these four bolts are slightly different than ours, so you have to modify the spindle. If you compare the two spindles side by side, you can see they're vastly different. PT Cruiser actually has a nipple sticking out the back. And you can also see that the bolt patterns aren't identical. They're similar, but they're not identical. So to fix that, I made a little jig. So what you do is you put those two pieces together and you weld this solid. So you're welding the center lug. And then this piece goes on. This one is only a tool.
So once you tighten these bolts, this locks the spindle from moving. And you can just take a 27 64th drill and drill these holes out. And you're only drilling about a 16th of an inch of interference because the holes for the Neon PT Cruiser are very close to these. They're just a little bit off. You could actually file them open if you wanted to. You don't even have to drill them. So once you've got the holes drilled, then you take the top plate off. So you can see these holes are a little oblong now, but not very much. So that basically replaces this spindle. And you would, of course, not need the bolts. They would go away. The backing plate, oddly enough, you don't even have to modify the holes at all. They're big enough um, clearance-wise that the bolts go right through. So even though the holes aren't the same, they match right up. So uh, the caliper, I think that's actually the same caliper that our cars run for the 10 and a half inch brakes. This, uh, I've actually, I haven't tried that yet, but I'm pretty sure it is looking at the dimensions. I'll get back to that later. So there it is, uh, real simple install. And you don't even need to go to the junkyard to get anything if you don't want. Um, probably the spindle would be the only key part that you'd need to get. And I'll post this up on the website on turbododge.com to give you the dimensions of these plates. But again, this is only a tool, so you'd need one of these and two each of these. And you can get these cut into water jetters. And probably run you a hundred bucks for the pair. Two sets. So let me know what you think. So this would be the first step I would do before you, you drill your holes is to weld the back and grind it flush because that's going to be permanent. To drill these holes you can see they're a little bit oblong towards the spindle but there's still plenty of room for the bolts. It all goes together nicely. Um, I think it's a winner.